it's Suki here and welcome back to another video. For this week's video, I am going to talk about my master's degree, Media and Communications at LSE. I was originally pursuing a double degree, Global Media and Communications at LSE and USC, which is a two-year master's degree course. But over Christmas, I have made a choice to switch degree. The reason behind that is because I actually secured a job to start working in London in September. Therefore, it makes no sense for me to continue the academia route when I wanna start working as soon as possible. I will post an update video for you guys, obviously, on what job I secured and the details and all that once everything is confirmed. I just wanna let you know it is a tech company and I'm very excited. Right now, I am going to be staying in London for the foreseeable future. Over the course of the few months, I have received a lot of questions on Instagram asking me about this degree because a lot of people are interested in it. Whether you are pursuing a single master's, like just solely media and communication, the classic track, or if you're doing um, media and development, media and uh, research track, there's different track or the global media and communication track that either links to Fudan, South Africa, or LA. The basis of your course is very similar to mine. First things first, I think this degree is very theoretical. There isn't any practical element, which is a reason why it kind of puts me off pursuing a second year because it's quite academic heavy, a lot of reading, a lot of essay writing. I just kind of feel like I don't really want to continue doing that uh, next year. But I've heard that the USC program in Annenberg, LA is a lot more practical. Uh, I can't obviously tell you about it because I am not doing it. There are four compulsory modules that you have to take. So the first one is theory and concept and media and communication, which is the same one for all of the communication master's degree. This module, I rate like a six out of 10. It's very, very theory heavy and you learn about theories such as the public sphere by Habermas, theories such as political economy theory, audience and user theory, feminist theory, the effects theory, discourse theory. Like a, a theory that has been used in media and communication, it will be covered by this course. It is a very useful course for you to kind of pick out the key theories that you want to pursue in your dissertation. So that is why it is compulsory for all of the media and communication degree uh, under the umbrella of this department. And the second compulsory course is methods of research in media and communication. So it teaches you how to do research methods such as interviewing, discourse analysis, content analysis, thematic analysis, so any like research, academic research methods, they will host a workshop on it and you can kind of get a glimpse and a bird's eye view on how it works. And then the next semester you get to pick a few that you like and actually study it in depth, which really helps your dissertation as well. And it all makes sense why it's compulsory. I rate this like a six as well, because one of the <laughs> reason why I rate it kind of lowish is because we have to do statistics in this module as well, which was quite a um, challenge for me myself since I'm quite a not a STEM student and having to do statistics was, was something new for me. I'd never done it in my A-level or GCSE. I, ha I got three right and I got the rest wrong. Like that's how bad I am. Obviously anything you learn would be useful in the future. So yeah, that is something. And then the third compulsory module is obviously your dissertation, which everyone has to do as well across all of the degrees under the umbrella of media and communications. But the fourth one, it was global media and communication for me because during the first term, I was still enrolled under the global media and communi communication degree. Therefore, that is my compulsory module. But if you are enrolled under media and communication instead, then your compulsory module would be called communication, culture and approaches. For me, global media and communication looked at um, how media is used worldwide in a global perspective, not only a very westernized perspective. So we looked at different places such as China, such as Africa, just across the globe. Being able to study different theories through a global perspective was quite eye-opening. So I really do like that module. I rate it a seven out of 10. On towards Lent term, which is the second term, all, all of the modules that I, I've done in the Lent term are the ones I've picked myself. This degree, you get to 
pick the rest of the module. So you have four compulsory ones and the rest of the modules are your choice. So I think you pick three modules of your choice, I think. The ones I picked myself is media, data, and social order. Another one is strategic communication and practice. And the third one I picked is digital media futures. I, I have been enjoying my Lent term, which is the second semester, way more than my first term, which is the Michaelmas term, mainly because the modules are chosen by me and I actually have more interest and curiosity in those modules. I don't really want to talk in depth in all of the three because obviously people would choose different ones. The one I really recommend everyone to do is media, data, and social order. This is a module led and directed by Professor Nick Caudry. He is quite a famous researcher in the media and communication realm. I have been reading his research since undergrad. This module basically kind of touches upon the datafication, data mining, and data surveillance through the online world, mainly social media and how corporates take our data and how they use it and what are the implications for our future? Does it affect the social order? Does it affect how the society run? It is really interesting and really relevant on a day-to-day -day basis. Overall, I think this degree is definitely worth pursuing. It has really answered a lot of questions that I wanted to answer in my undergrad that I didn't have a chance to. This degree has oomphed up my employability since I've already secured a job before graduating, which is amazing. I never would have thought I could have achieved that. Yes, <laughs> you probably can get a good job with this degree, hopefully. Oh, I can't speak for everyone, but for me personally, I did secure one of my, I say, I don't know if I can say dream job because I haven't started. I don't really know what the company is actually like, but one of the jobs that I do want to pursue if I have the chance to basically. The assessment and the exam for this degree are mainly just coursework, so you write essays. The only exam I have to take for this degree is a statistic exam, which is a two hour exam, and you just sit, like, you just do a paper doing like p value, r value, r square statistics, stuff like that, which isn't fun, but I guess quantitative research method is a bit useful in the field of social sciences. I see why they make it that we have to do it. And also, a thing about this degree, and I think LSE in general, is they have formative and summative essays. So, before the end of your module, before week 10, is normally a 10 week to 11 week module, each module, you would have a formative essay that is uh, optional to do obviously it's recommended that you do it and then you get feedback from your professor so you know what to improve for your summative essay the formative essay does not count to your final grade at all which i think is a really good system that allows you to do a little warm-up and see how lse professor likes you to write and what their expectations are so you can bring that uh, carry that forward to your summative and hopefully do well in your summative. Obviously the structure of this program is like any other, well not any other, but I've only been to the University of Sheffield, but it's very similar to the University of Sheffield structure. So lecture, seminar, and maybe workshop. So just these types. There's also like online forums that you can submit questions on, but people rarely use it because it's just a bit scary to submit your question that like all students can see. So I normally like just book a uh, office hour with my professor, which is obviously available in this degree as well like most universities this degree in my first semester my lectures were online because of covid but seminar was in person and office hour was also online and the second semester which is lent term which is where i am right now all of my teachings are done in person but obviously we need to wear mask i do prefer that a lot more Okay, just a final few notes about this degree and program. I think the department itself is quite a welcoming department. All the professors are really nice and willing to help you if you reach out, obviously, because if you don't reach out, they won't know that you have struggles. We also have our own department common room in the seventh floor of the Fawcett House. If you're an LSE student, then you know where that is. If not, then you find your way around. There are also like departmental socials that we host. It is a very good and supportive community. Everyone is just happy to chat with you if you have any question. We have a media and communication group chat where people help each other a lot. It's just a very selfless and respectful and helpful community that I really do like. Not gonna lie, like I have not made amazing friends like I did in Sheffield, but I think it's mainly because I'm only here for a year and I've only been here for six, seven to eight months. Right now, compared to in Sheffield, I was there for three years. So the 
level of friendship is definitely not tantamount to each other. Overall, I really have enjoyed my degree here in LSE and I, I would not have second thought this decision now seeing it. I am so happy that I pursued it and just do a master's before I start working because it, I think it also elevated my CV and application and made me a tad more employable. So yeah, that is the end of my video telling you about this degree that I am doing. I hope you find this helpful and I hope I've covered the main points that you were unsure about and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!